Hello, here, Pub Sports Radio. Do you guys want to challenge the personalities here on Pub Sports Radio? Do you guys think you're better than them at entering in your MMA predictions and picks? Would you want to get paid for it? $100? Here's how you do it, man. You sign up right here at the link below. It's just this easy. PubSportsRadio.com. Enter your email. Pick your weekly picks. That's it. Oh, and you get bonus points if you can predict how they're going to win and what round. Every single week, a new winner is getting crowned. So every Saturday on Pub Sports Radio. So come on and check us out. You can win $100 just for signing up. Only thing you need to do is see if you can beat us here at Pub Sports Radio by entering your UFC predictions and picks weekly. Do it. God damn you. See you guys soon. What's up, everybody? This Big Show Picks host of the Locker Room Talk podcast. I'm here in the locker room this week with the boys to go over USC, ESPN 61, or Vegas 95, whatever you're calling it these days. Uh, first things first, let's go over the winner from the pub contest, Philip B. with a 765. DC, give, give him a special shout out, though, bro. Uh, I believe Sweet Bet said he lost the first three. Fights in the night and still won the contest. Like that's crazy. Yeah, he bro. pretty he pretty much went perfect, I guess. From from there on out. TC, normally we start with you for the recap. How'd you do, bud? Well, first and foremost, shout out to all you guys, man. Shout out to the whole fucking pub, everybody on panel, of course, uh, everybody watching the premiere right now, man. Smash the like button. Great to see shout you. Out. As usual, uh, man, it was a good week, uh, and it was pretty much all due. My week, like my success this past week, was all due to the Locker Room Talk podcast parlay, boys. I cashed the core, and then I said, let me add Figgy Fig to that motherfucker and cash that one, too. So cash those two parlays. Uh, ended up, uh, it was like a little over a unit for me, but I had a lot of other stuff like not go right, but it felt damn proud to just cash another parlay on the show here and uh it's great to be back man ufc vegas 95 and uh hoping to make it two good weeks in a row and uh billy. Also, cheers everybody billy how'd you do man uh, it felt like one of those weekends where it was like billy you're doing too much <laughs> i bet too many fucking dogs man it was like all the parlays i bet schmack bro from pfl with the locker room podcast parlay the 305 uh five leg parlay i gave out the weekend Schmack. Parleys were schmacking. Where I fucked up last week were the dog shots. You just don't come back from the Muhammad Yaya getting knocked out in round one. The Cheeto <laughs> by decision. Cheeto dropping round three? Cheeto, that's what we're doing nowadays. Cheeto blacklisted. And uh, uh, the other dog I had, Ronaldo Bedoya. Damn, fool me one, shame on me, fool me twice. Nigga, damn, you're going on the blacklist, man. Fuck you, Bedoya. <laughs> Mills, how did you do and kind of walk us into the MMA news, sir? Yeah, nah, man. Last week, man, I had the one of the best weeks of my um, probably this Hell year. about it. You know what I mean? Definitely was able to make some money. We went the five. The saddest I've ever seen somebody say I won the most money money I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life, bro. Come Our on. boys were out last the energy week. guy. Don't, don't, don't make me be the energy Our guy. Come on. boys were out last week. If you did a parlay. You got paid last week. They said, give me my money. Yeah, man. I mean, we swept the board, man. We went 5-0 and over here with the parlays. Uh, not just the parlays, too. I mean, the single plays definitely got us paid, too, as well, man. Uh, you know, some of the flags cashed, some didn't. Some of the Gs cashed, some didn't. Uh, we stuck to them, though. We started off the night right with Cedricus Dumas. Had a play on him at minus 195. Laid that chalk to talk on that one. Got in the door with that one. Had a single individual play with Sher Magamoto minus two fifteen when he first opened up on the book. Biggest respect of the card for me. I, I know you didn't have crazy amount of stake, but the confidence in Mackenzie Dern that was a great fucking call, bro. It, it was. It yeah, was why, a watching the fight. Watching the fight made me go, "Fuck, man!" <laughs> like, I, I should have just listened to more money on that. I just you know I'm a sucker that, for like, my leg of the parlay being a female too. So 
<laughs> Bet the minus 215 fight goes the distance. I was thinking, yeah, hey, Bills just go ahead, the Bills. <laughs> no, we no, we we was doing it, man. We we had a good stream over here. So, you know, like we hit with Mackenzie Durham minus 130. Uh, we hit with Alvarez minus 140. We hit with Figgy minus 135. Um, you know, we hit with all the locker room par parlays. I did lose on Bedoya, you know what I mean? So, and I did have a little bitty bet on uh Corey Sanhagen as well. So, we we got we got that Bedoya, we got that Bedoya out early though. Like, that was a that was a good good thing to get out and when we're not banking on it later, you know, at least it happened yeah. early and the rest of the night was smooth. And Did the best that was the best part about it, it was a dog. So, I mean, yeah, when you yeah, lose yeah. a plus 120. Compared to losing a minus one sixty, easy to come back. I didn't really lose nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like what I'm I saying, it was a good. It was a if you could have picked one uh, minus, you know, you know, that was a good one to get out of the way if we were going to lose it. It probably right. helped us the rest of the way. That was the one, man. And like right when that, um, right when Sheriff Magomedov won, man, like I, yeah, bank account was was set exactly. from there. Man. Like and then when Umar even won too. So look, man, this is what I did. I told y'all. I played every single parlay, five of them, right? But then I parlayed all for every single together two on top of that shit. So like when I'm trying to tell y'all, like it was, it was the it was, it was stacked, man. like it was a great night. I tried to, you know, second best night of my year, I think, gambling this year. Um, but so it was it was definitely a great night, man. So the single bets hit. Um, I had plays, individual plays. I had over one and a half in the Cedricus Dumas. Easy. I had round three to start minus that one. Was a killer. That was a great call, too, by the way. Right. Bro, you right. had fight to start round three and Dottel Mays. Can see it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why are you watching oh. that? <laughs> and then Shamil Gazia. Like, like I had we, we had straight bets on him. He didn't win inside the distance. Like, but yeah, it was one of those spots to where, like, if you if you seen the way that the card was lining up in Abu Dhabi, all you yeah. had to do is. Murdovs, Akmarkovs, the the Meridavs. Parlay boys time, just, and you can win that dude with the OV on the end. They're gonna fucking win. Boom, there you go. Right. Me and Billy started that trend like I think like three years ago. We put out an EV OV yeah. fucking parlay collab. It fucking died like first fucking fight though. <laughs> I'm like, all right, never again. Fuck it. Like we were trying something, and now it, it would have came true. Man, left. speaking about fights that died though, the Fialo fight is officially off this week's card. Um, the Fialo and Nascimento <laughs> fight that's officially not on the. That sucks, card. dude. That was one of the best fucking. No, like, it was not. Bro. It was two watch. fucking flyweights above the age of thirty years old that are never seeing a fucking title shot at any time fucking soon, and both of them have been mad inconsistent with showing up inside the cage. I'm glad that fight got taken off. And we all have to talk. And about then Bashara got taken off the card too. Awesome. Uh, he got a little bit of injury. Yeah, I did have a parlay with him minus two thirty five. I ain't too mad at that though. Um, but uh, Chris Gutierrez is staying on the card. He got a new opponent, Quang Lee. Uh, he was going to be fighting on the Dana White Contender Series. I was looking forward to him. Uh, former LFA fighter. Now he's already in the UFC on short notice. You know, so um, I'm gonna be surprised and see what the lines come out to. But I'm probably tell you guys like this, man. I'm betting Kong Lee straight in that fight, man. It is what yeah, it bro, is. Yeah, bro. I don't want it, to. It's probably gonna open up. Uh, when I did the projection, it looked somewhere around 300, 350, and uh, I kind of don't want any parts of Chris Gutierrez. The replacement fighter is gonna be a minus 350. No, Chris Gutierrez is gonna be minus 300. <laughs> so that's probably like we get like over a two to one price tag coming on the other way on the short notice fighter. Right and then it's official, man. Go you got Elisa Poria, Max Holloway going on in uh, Abu Dhabi in the October card. Islam Makachev is injured, you know, so he can't, he can't I love fight. It though, bro. That card is fucking stacked, bro. I looked at that card the other day, bro. That card's stacked from top to bottom, man. Uh, if Islam's going to be out, leave that area on the sidelines. Keep on stacking these Abu Dhabi cards. Like, bro, that card is stacked. From like top to bottom, like the prelims are even like Neil Magny's first fight of the night type shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that card's okay, okay, okay. Who? What's the best fight on the card besides the main event? Uh, let me grab my. Yeah, it was just because when you said stacked, you said it as if you had it in mind. So, I mean, I just like keeping people on their toes. So, shut the fuck up if you don't know any other fights. No, 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 no,
Ilya Taporia, Max Holloway, co-main event, Robert Whitaker, Chamayev. Uh, oh, it's that card. Real oh, gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura Murphy versus Dan Ige. Laura Murphy. Main card is Mahmoud and Goliath versus Racket. Alexander Ratchik. Right, the right, right. Is That's Renat Bakrinov versus Ruzia Boab. You're telling me that card's not stacked? No, right I'm yet? not. Yeah. I'm not. Rafa I'm saying that I needed. You needed to know two of those fights. I'm saying that you needed to know at least two or three of those fights offhand before you just. Bro, but not yeah. Like, I'm it's with not you until though. the end of fucking October, bro. It's not until Halloween. I'm sorry, I don't know what the Halloween card is. Dang, you look at Billy cursing on a podcast, bro. Foul language, cursing on a All podcast. Right. I'm just ah. telling you, bro. That card is stacked from top to bottom. You we believe you, Billy. We heard you. We heard you. Ah, shit. We heard I you good. Like, I, just, I messed with you. Billy, with it. the influx of young talent coming in, and I heard you say it on the Saturday stream, there's probably going to be some cuts coming up soon. Um, which fighters are you convinced are projects, and which ones are you thinking advanced to the prospect stages out of these fighters on the card this week? You gave me the list. You should know one. Pick one that you want. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, first name that you see on this card that is like uh, the goods is a future from the old – podcast parlay danny barlow man definitely a name to watch on this card his presence inside the cage with the striking exchanges just stand out immediately on the film i mean he has power in either hand that can put your lights out and his ufc debut definitely didn't go as ideal he broke his hand during like i think it was like the first round i uh, still bit down on the mouthpiece I mean, fuck, dude. I bet against uh, Nikolai way back in the day with the 21-year-old Michael Morales. Nikolai's a tough veteran on the regional scene, a solid striker. Uh, he kicks and he wrestles. But honestly, man, he's fought in a lot of organizations like Fury FC, LFA, United Fight League. And getting signed at the age of 34, I feel like don't let the OV fool you. I mean, if he was crazy talented, he would have gotten signed before the age of 34 to the UFC fight and in all those organizations. He'll win some UFC fights, but taking this fight on short notice versus Danny Barlow. Nah, man. Give me the left-handed God. <laughs> DC, did you check out the list and which fighter are you convinced is moving to the prospect stage instead of a project? Well, I was going to ask like which one of the uh, the last ones, but I, I'm, it's got to be Chelsea Chandler, right? But no, I, I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll touch on the Danny Barlow fight because I, I just taped the uh, his new opponent, um, the uh, however you pronounce his last name. I'm not even going to try it. The that dude, uh, Nikolai. Nikolai, just said Nikolai. <laughs> um, thank you, Billy. So uh, yeah, I think Barlow gets it done. I think Nikolai is gonna uh, keep Barlow honest early, but the short notice, I just can't see him getting it done because I think they are gonna like trade. Like he does seem like he wants to to strike with Barlow. I think the fact that Barlow's uh, southpaw going up against this orthodox dude, I think is gonna you know the left hand. I think will land. So yeah, I think Barlow's probably the one uh, out of those uh, those matches that you get. I, I think he probably. I, I was kind of already like after that last performance, especially against Quinlan. I think it's probably Barlow out of those three. I think he gets it done. Mills, you got any thoughts on the Santos Chandler side? On the Santos and Chandler side? Yeah. You, as far you as uh, the, as far as um. Got it, got it, got it. So, um, you, you, you tend to think that, um, one of the Santos or Chandler, uh, fits the prospects and uh, projects list. My fault. I think that was me that added that one, and I'll, I'll step in, Mills. I feel like Chelsea Chandler's a little bit of a project that could be a potential prospect after this weekend. I mean. <sighs> The you fuck like you talking about? She belongs in the projects, bro. What are you talking about? She's about Ooh. to be a prospect. Don't even get me started. Next topic, bro. If you want me to talk about a project that's going to be a prospect, just ask me. Don't throw me no. No, that's not even a layup. That's like a chess pass when I need an alley-oop, bro. All right? <laughs> Chelsea Chandler, like, what? that's what you want me to talk about right now, Big Show? Well, everybody else already yeah. talked about everything else. You were left with the fucking low hanging fruit, bro. Jesus Christ, get the fuck out of here! Damn, bro. Can I get in a, a project to prospect, or do I have to talk <laughs> yeah, about? Go ahead. Chandler. It was Chandler. just a segue. You could pick whoever the fuck you wanted to talk about. God <laughs> damn. Well, why, why would you set me up with that one then? Yeah. Oh my god. Because yeah, you were looking boy. down. I didn't know which one to pick. <laughs> god, I'm ready to go. Just call on me. Go. Bang! 
Quang Lee is the project going to be prospecting here, man. Former LFA fighter, man. He has about six or seven fights all up in the LFA. Started off fighting in the LFA, okay? One of those guys fighting for his country, okay? And you don't see a lot of these guys showing up 8-0, finishing people too. Well diverse. Two KOs, few submissions, few fights going to decision. I think he's definitely the only guy on this whole UFC card that's a project, turn a prospect besides Danny Barlow. But I think the ceiling on Quinn Glay is way higher than any fighter on this card. So that's my project, a prospect. Bang. Good shit. That was good shit. Good shit. Anybody else want to touch on him before we move on? Hey, no, I'll touch on the Chelsea Chandler fight. Oh, um, I, I want to touch on the Chelsea Chandler Santos fight. I, I I definitely think there's a potential dog avenue here for Chelsea Chandler, bro. I think she has the wrestling upside in this matchup. She's always going to fight for your money. I get it. Santos is a uh, more proven veteran, but like, it's just like I get it. She's in back in shape without the mom bob, but like she on a three fight losing streak tiago santos her husband's on a four fight losing streak bro they just not making money right now like they're they're just not making money for you at the window you take chelsea chandler here people think of the norma dumont meme fight but she has a well-rounded game she's very good in the ground she throws powerful strikes um i think she's going to expose santos's 42 percent takedown defense and she'll look like the favorite being in top position uh off of the takedown so uh give me chelsea chandler as a little bit of a dog money this weekend there you go, TC. You got anything to follow it up or just go ahead and move on? I will say Chandler is uh, – the prospect of betting Chandler is less repulsive with her as a dog, but it's still a fucking pass, man. It's – yeah, no thanks. Make good money on her in her last fight, man, in a fight where everybody was making fun of her for the ah, Norman Dumont dude, fight. I'm going to just wish you best of luck, brother, so. Everyone was saying, Nunez is going to knock her out. Nunez is going to knock her out. What happened? Chelsea Chandler gets the takedown, stayed on top, wins it. <clears throat> unanimous decision. Like, I, I don't know, man. I'm fading Giannis Santos. If there was one person on this card that you told me that I got cut on Monday and I wouldn't be shocked, it'd probably be Giannis Santos. Right on. Well, you guys see the bottom. You know what time it is. All right, guys, we tried this past few uh, podcasts. I really like the idea. This is The Price is Right, where we're going to go over three fights that I handpicked for the boys. Well, not handpicked, handpicked uh, for them to cover themselves. But uh, before we go anywhere else, head over to my bookie, use promo code PUBSports, get a 50% match on credit card and 100% match on Bitcoin. The first fight I had picked up was Mills. With Arosa and Kanza, do you think the price is right on this one, Mills? I do, man. I like Carl Rosa in this spot, man. She's a minus 210. I'll be honest with you guys. I played her at that minus 200 price tag in here. When I seen this fight got announced, I was like, wait a minute. Why are they fighting again? I swore they fought already, man, <laughs> but they didn't. But they didn't. And I was like, how they didn't? It's just, it's just, I don't know, man. Maybe they was both on the ultimate fighter at the time and stuff. But I swear they fought, you know, but they didn't. I like Carl Rosa in the spot, man. Her last fight out against Arena Aldana. Oh, my gosh, man. It was violence. That first round was crazy. I remember the play-by-play, -play too. Um, She's overall the better fighter. She can mix it up. She can mix in the takedowns. Her striking is, you know, better. She switched gyms. I think she's going to, you know, show that improvements in this fight, too. Give me Carl Rosa in this spot. Of course, if you want to get that price tag down from that minus 210, I mean, the price is right because I do think she's a two to one favorite but if you want to get her to win by decision you could get it probably at like minus 130 or minus 110 but i think the price is right on carl rosa to win anybody want to add on before we go to the next name uh no yeah. no way i i do carol hosa fights way too close i'm not saying bet panty kianzad but like at her own over two to one the price is wrong bitch Ain't no way I'm playing that fucking shit. I wish you the best of luck, though, Mills. I think Hosa probably wins, but that's a little too wide for me. I, it's not crazy, but, like, nah, man, I'm, just, I'm staying away from this one. Like, if they're just going to stand and trade, like, Panny's definitely alive. But, yeah, I think Hosa probably snakes it out. Billy, any thoughts? It's usually Bills versus Mills, but this might be a Bill and Mills in this one. I'm kind of right there with him. I like Carol Rosa a lot this weekend. Uh, she was once a hype prospect. She started off her promotional run on a four-fight win streak. 
like she's done. She's going two and three, kind of interchanging wins and losses. If she can get the wrestling going here versus Penny, I think she's going to look like the runaway favorite. Uh, Kiani, Piani, Kianzad's lost three out of her last four fights. 80% of her fights have gone to the decision. That's not a good sign for her in this fight. I think she's going to lose the minutes here. Um, if this stays standing at the feet, it could look a little bit closer. But I like Kara Rosa by decision. Uh, that's sitting around at plus 110 on bet online. And uh, once the props come out for this weekend, I like Kara Rosa probably round through your decision around that. Or Mills said like minus 130, minus 150 price tag range. Um, I think Kara Rosa gets this fight going a little bit later. Uh, I like her and her uh, partner, Denise Gomez, betting on both of them. Uh, Denise Gomez served us very well in her last fight. Um, give me the uh, partner here, Kara Rosa. While you're still on the mic, and I know you wanted to talk about this fight, Chet Bay versus Damon Jackson. It's on you, Billy. Banger. This is definitely one of the best fights of the card this weekend, but this is one of those like where the styles kind of makes the matchup. In this case, the price tag, and I do like Chet Bay here in this spot. He comes from a judo background, which should serve him very well in dealing with Jackson's grappling. All of Chepe's losses have kind of aged well. Brito, Garcia, okay, maybe the strong Soriano one doesn't look the best, but regardless, training at team elevation, he's going to have good cardio here. He's been priced as an underdog in each of his UFC fights that he's won. Uh, so seeing the minus 265 price tag might be a shock to the public or a pass for the Sharps, but uh, this is the last bit of his first UFC contract. I think Chepe shows out here in this spot and gets a knockout in rounds two or three. Um, if Jackson isn't able to get the wrestling going, he usually ends up gassing out five or six of his uh, career losses inside the distance. He's on the back end of his career, 35 years old, featherweight division. I mean, dude just got a hair transplant in his last fight. Uh, you could kind of see in his last three fights, despite winning that Alex Hernandez won, he was the one that ended up gassing out late in that fight. Uh, which is usually not the story in the Alex Hernandez fights. So I kind of like Pepe Marichal to uh, get a knockout here in rounds two or three. I don't know what the odds are that are going to be on FanDuel yet, but um, definitely a potential uh, spot that I'm looking at for this weekend. Wow, TC. I don't think you left you much on the bone, but do you have anything you want to say about this fight? I mean, Billy covered uh, the hair. Yeah, I think Billy pretty much covered it. Pillar he covered the hair implants, the fucking. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm going to kind of say what I said on the last one, man. I think Chepe wins, but I don't think the price is right. I'd like, he's been an underdog and he's been, he's been winning, but now all of a sudden he's a favorite. And like, I'll be honest with you, man. I thought he kind of got away that last fight and i don't think damon jackson is charrier or whatsoever but i think damon jackson is live in this fight i don't know man like it's tempting it's it kind of feels like jackson or pass from a betting standpoint for me but like i'm gonna pick chepe i think he gets it done but like the idea of parlaying him is is a little uh a little scary but yeah i think uh, i think it's a chepe mariscal spot i think he'll he'll get damaging strikes and hopefully not get fucking choked no, so I know you've done an interview with Jackson. Uh, are you kind of biased at all on this fight, or do you think the price is right for Chepe? No, I, I ain't biased when it comes to betting on a fighter. You know, I might I might bet on him just because, you know, I, I like it a little bit, but on, on it, I could always see clear and straight. On this one, though, the price is wrong, man. There's no way Chepe Mariser should be a minus – Two to one favor, and I think the odds in the books are reflecting it. He opened up a minus two sixty, seen him as low as minus two ten on some of the books out there. Damon Jackson, well known veteran, uh, tough tested. He can make this fight a lot easier than what it could play out. Take him down to the ground, make it a boring fight. Seen him do it before. Won't be surprised if he does it again. Both these fighters signed to the same like coach or management or something like that. So you know, um. And Damon Jackson's going out there to win. This guy's been calling for a fight. He'd be on Twitter more active than anybody just calling for fights. Hey, literally tagging fighters. You got a fight book? No, you want to fight? Cool, move on. So he got this fight, you know, on short notice replacement because Chepe Marisol is supposed to be fighting Danny Gay. Danny Gay took that fight on short notice within that day. Story went on. This fight was supposed to happen two weeks ago. Got moved back to this fight card. The price is definitely wrong. Damon Jackson got more time to prepare for this one. I think Damon Jackson's live in this one. Um, I like Chippy Marisol. Been following this guy before he came to the UFC. Um, and he's been three and zero in the UFC. This the thing though. I think all those fights he's been a dog. If you ask me, I think it should be minus one forty five, minus one fifty. If it was that. Could kind of look at it and respect it as that. But minus 210 on Chepi Marisol against Damon Jackson? No, sir. The price is wrong. Right on. Moving on to the next one. 
GC, this is the fight I had picked out for you. What would 265 pound TC, who would you want to fight in this one? And is the price right? I don't know, man. This, these have these been tough for me because it's like, even though I think, I guess I will, the short answer, yes. I think the price is right. I think Spivak, with him being younger, he seems like the more improved fighter to me. Like Tybura, not that he's like regressed, like he's still like managed to rattle off wins and stuff. I just think that Spivak has improved over the years more than Tybura. He's the younger guy right now. I think he has the upside. So I think he wins, but like, I don't know, man. I Just in a vacuum, it seems weird that the guy that won the first fight is the dog now, but I get it. So yeah, I suppose the price is right here and I'll, I'll be picking Spivak. Anybody want to add anything on this heavyweight fight? Um, this is a kind of a fight where I think the value kind of I'm kind of like against TC here. Uh, I think the value kind of lies with Tybura in the underdog spot here. Uh, Speedback coming off the one plus year layoff. Tybura looked good in their first matchup, winning the decision. The biggest difference for this fight it's going to be a five round main event. Um, I don't know how that kind of factors into the cap, but I think Ty Borer has the better five-round cardio. Spivak's only faced two takedowns in his career since that fight. Uh, we'll see how they come in at weigh-ins, but what kind of makes me not want to bet Ty Borer is that I think Spivak may have up to a 30-pound weight advantage here in this matchup. And if that's the case, I kind of want to bet the under three-and-a-half total rounds and violence in this fight. I think we're due for a main event finish. The last couple of cards have been very snooze-fest main events. Yeah, this is a this is an easy one for me to just pass on since I don't bet main events anyway. Um, I would probably lean speed back in a five rounder, but still, I wouldn't feel confident at minus one fifty five on Sunday for it. Mills, do you have any quick thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean they pretty much speed back. I think opened up like a minus one fifteen on my local book. Um, then I seen them get steamed all the way up to a minus one fifty four. Um, I, I think the price is warranted. It seems like a. Go ahead, TC. My fault, man. I'll no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, sounds like you're about to. God damn it, boys. God damn it. Joey, what's up, brother? Shout out to you for catching your plant flag last week. How's it going? I'm doing good, man. It feels good back to being in the win column. I'm ready to make it two straight. And hey. Not only did I win, I saw everyone won. So we cleared the board, and let's try to go do it again. There you go. What do you got for us this week? So if everyone that's been keeping track of my shit, I'm 2-0 and on dogs. I'm ready to make it three. So I'm going to keep it nice and short. My planet flag fighter of the week, Chelsea Chandler. I know people are probably thinking like, whoa, why are you picking a lower level MMA? God. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Chandler is the more well-rounded. She will be the stronger fighter. Around. If you look at how Santos has been struggling, it's usually with, against the stronger and the more ideal, thicker type of women. You look at like Aspen Ladd, Vieira, even though she beat Vieira, but Vieira didn't throw strikes, and Holly Holm. And with that 42% takedown defense, I think Chandler can easily take advantage of that. And throughout those three fights I just named, she's been taken down 9 out of 17, controlled for almost 23 minutes. Has Santos. And yes, I know Santos showed a picture saying, oh, I'm in the best shape of my life. But when you take a control of her, her overall face looks like she's ready to quit. And I think there is a sneaky chance if Chandler does get the takedown, she has very good, strong ground and pound, and she might be able to get Santos out of there. And as Billy said earlier, it wouldn't shock me. Maybe Sunday, Monday morning, we see that Santos is cut. There you I go. Like it. I definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, I'm not going to try to fall for Santos' trap. Um, the Joey, my question for you is: How do you feel about the Janta Denise and Carl Williams prelim fight? I know you were texting me about that one uh, the other day. So I think, look, whoever wins, I think the UFC is definitely going to try to give them a push up because ideally, UFC heavyweights ideally suck. So there's definitely going to be a push-up, whoever does win. As I told you, if Carl wins, it's going to be like, okay, we have a guy that can nonstop wrestle, but make it boring. Ideally, I would like to see the Brazilian win personally because he's the more exciting guy. Yes, him getting taken down by Lane wasn't the best look, but 
But after round one, he tied the takedown defenses, and then he finally found the punch. My slight lean, I got no bet yet, but my slight lean, I'm hoping for the dog to get a knockout personally. Joey. Let me ask you, Joey. Go ahead, man. Yes, sir. Since it's Big Show's birthday today, you got a birthday bet for him this week on this UFC card, man? Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. Thank actually, you, I do, actually. If you want to, you know what? Let's give you a nice little parlay. I don't know what the odds are going to be, but I'm going to go Yusuf Salal. I am going to go Yusuf Salal. And damn, where the hell the rest of the fight's at? And uh, Danny Barlow, that could be a base. I actually like the base for that. And if you guys feel comfortable with any other leg. No, it's not you guys. No, no. I'm making the three legs. Oh, I got the three legs. Can you give, can you give, can you give look, look. Funny. Yeah, I got a birthday gift for you because I actually got this as a parlay. I got a four-leg like, piece parlay. Just bet that you can bet and make money on. That's it. Okay. Um, give me uh, Charles Lumpus, the knockout Kasama. Okay. Um, Wait, who? Charla, Charla, Charla. I said his name so wrong, but yeah, he's gonna knock out uh, Kazama. There you go. Uh, Kazama, I mean, Jajori, Charlie Lampus, Jajori by knockout plus one hundred five. All right, Joey. My question is, uh, what do you think of the Gutierrez replacement fight? I actually did ask Mills about this, and he said the guy was pretty good. And from what I've seen by stat-wise, he looks well-rounded. And if you're telling me that people are really going to try to back UTRs, like let's say the line's like minus 300, minus 350, you are out of your goddamn mind, and I'll probably be following Mills and Billy. I'll probably take a shot on the dog, personally. I'm not, no, I'm not taking a shot on the dog, but I'll respect Mills' take about oh, I'll go with Mills then, man. I'm going to partly know Chris Gutierrez. I know minus 300. Yeah, I'll, nah, I'll, you got I'll, me fucked up on that one. Be looking at the dog on that one, no. But hell yeah, man. You're going to get back in that win column, man. You was on your way to catching five and oh. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the most people got to is, you know, that four and oh. We'll see if you can get hey, back to I that. Uh, last week. Five. I guess last week was Shamil. So I was happy yes, with sir. that. And let's make it two straight. Let's go. Let's right, go. I appreciate it, Joey. Thank you for yeah, having on the show. Later, Joey. All right, appreciate it, man. Mm. All right, boy. Right you know what time it is now. What's up? Let's get it. All right, you guys know what time it is now. We're going to roll through the card. Let me know if you think it's going to end inside of the distance or go to a decision. First fight up. Lucinio versus El Kassar. TC, I'll start with you. We got a decision the first time that ended in a draw. I think it's another fucking decision. I think it's a greasy fucking split, and I have no idea who's going to fucking win it. But, yeah, it's in the cards for me. Billy? Yeah, I do agree with the hit in the cards. Uh, I had a bet, I think, on Allen card the first time that they fought. Uh, she dominated the early portions of that fight with her groundwork. She's a BJJ specialist on the ground, but she ended up gassing out versus Luciano. Uh, she ended up taking over that fight, started swinging, got the 10-8 round, hence the draw. She'll have the height and read adva uh, reach advantage and the striking advantage, but I still don't like the minus 170 price tag. Uh, while she's 24 and she'll still be making improvements, give me the veteran here not to make the same mistakes. Um, I like Alan Carr here probably, uh, probably just straight up on the money line, but I think she wins the decision. But if she she got a sub, I wouldn't be shocked. Like she's really good uh, BJJ specialist. Mills, this one at three bells. Uh, I think it hits three bells. Uh, last fight took three bells. Um, yeah, I like the I like the favorite in this one, man. Um, I think uh, the price tag is off though. Can't get to the window with it by itself. Uh, but I did do a parlay with it though. While you're still on the mic, Aaron's versus Lal. Um, that one, man, I can see Zalal maybe getting the finish, but uh, I would be going with the over in that fight. I think it goes a distance in there. TC, 
Man, if it was like the old Zalal, it would be just Zalal decision all fucking day. But yeah, I kind of feel like he might sub this dude. Aaron has been sub once before, but yeah, I'm gonna be a little fence riding bitch. It's like 50 50 Zalal decision or uh, maybe, yeah, maybe club and sub, something like that. Really? I'll be interested to see what the media day uh, comes out as. Uh, this is Gennaro Aaron's fourth fight in the UFC, so he's probably last fight of his contract, job on the line, and that either might help him or hurt him here. I think he's going to go forward, and him going forward probably lets the law get takedowns. Aaron's has a 28% takedown defense. Gomez is able to land three takedowns. Troy was able to wrestle and clinch and win minutes in that fight, and he can't wrestle at all. So it feels like a wide price tag one's allowed, but – the wrestling kind of makes him the big favorite here in this one. Um, like two cents said, old is allowed, probably a decision, but man, 28% takedown defense. Fuck, dude, he might find himself a submission in rounds mm-hmm. two or three. Uh, he's minus 400 for a reason. I feel like uh, it could be one price tags that are too big, but it probably just ends up cash. I think he's a candidate for the, for the one leg for the core for sure. Yeah, we'll talk about the core. You, you like the over and you want to put him in as a candidate? No, mm-hmm. I think it's the wrestling. I bro. Say it Gennaro, it's probably it's probably you know, like, I can't hear you. one of you. My bad. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was backing up Mills. I was saying Aaron's wrestling sucks. So All right. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that at the end, though. We'll get it to the end. I believe you guys. Uh, I've heard the parlay from several people already, so – Move, uh, Billy. While you're under, you're still here. Williams versus Dennis. Yeah, we. I had, or I should. Say, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I had a lot of money. Please do, please do. I don't know who else you would be speaking I'm for. Yeah, you know, it, speak for it, really. I had money. I, I I believe we're all in the stream. I had bad money on Denise and Parley's the last time that he fought, bro. That do kind of gives me fraud vibes. Bro. I had him like, as my leg. I feel like we got away with one last time, bro. Like, he was so losing that fight to Austin Lane, the bottom of barrel of heavyweights. Austin Lane dominated him the whole of the first round. And damn, man, if Carl Williams is going to win this fight, it's probably going to be a decision. I mean, he just controls lower level heavyweights and wins decisions. So, uh, if Denise is KO or a bust, if you like Denise, I would bet the knockout prop because Carl Williams probably wins this by decision. Um, at this age, though, I just feel like the knees can't break some of those bad habits. I wish Carl Williams would attack the backs more because if he attacked the backs more, he would get rear naked chokes and submissions, but he just stays on top in top position and just rides out decisions. No ditty for all that whole entire last 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) TC? All right. Well, I was debating whether to do this or not, but I'm going to fucking do it. I hit the last one with Tom Aspinall. It is time to plant a flag. So, uh, start it up, big show. Birthday boy. All right, man. I'm playing the flag here. Most of my planted flag fighters have been underdogs. I'm going with the underdog here. Yes, I know. He looked like shit against Austin Lane, who's one of the worst fucking heavyweights ever. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, you know, uh, Justin Taffa couldn't get Carl Williams, blah, 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 blah. Denise is a better kickboxer than Justin Taffa. He's a better fighter, period, but he's definitely a better kickboxer. Uh, And Taffa was landing plenty, man. So I don't know, man. I think Carl Williams is like a lay and pray decisionator. And I think Denise is going to knock him into the next fucking galaxy. So (laughs) give me me Janata Denise. He's the most dangerous dude that Williams has faced. I think he's much dangerous than these other jobbers he's fought including Justin Taffa. So, yeah, give me Denise to uh, keep the zero and send Carl Williams into the fucking stratosphere. Flag planted, United Denise, plus 180. I already bet it. Let's fucking go. It's crazy because Joey said that same shit to me. That's because me and Joey was talking about it, and I got him on the denounce plan. But, uh, yeah, we, me and Joey were DMing about that too. Mills? Yeah, man. Um. I think that flag is going to get broke as soon as you try to plant that shit in the ground, man. Um, I got Carl Williams in this spot. You know what I mean? I played him even straight uh, and parlayed him with Danny Barlow uh, earlier on when Danny Barlow was at that minus 260. But yeah. then 
I didn't hop back in, you know, I, I did other things because I like Carl Williams, but with other fighters, you know, so I start parlaying with other little fighters that I got going on there, too. I think he wins by decision. The best bet is over one and a half for me, too. Um, I think he's going to just take the knees down and does what he wants to. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins. I guess that first, you know, KO inside the distance, ground and pound. Um, but yeah, man, I, I love Carl Williams in this spot. And I think um, it uh, I think it goes the distance to answer the question. No, okay. no, girl, no <laughs> girls, guys, guns, guts, no, no. Nah, guys. none of that. He's no, nah, he's none of that. Okay. He's, he ain't none of that for me. That's he's crazy though. The over right half of this fight is minus two oh five for the over. Fight goes the distance is plus one ten. One of those two are wrong. Yeah, yeah, man, definitely. he was, dude, he was getting touched up. He, he said some bullshit about, oh, well, you know, I didn't want to get into a pissing contest with Tafa. It's like, you did. He, dude, if he tries to fight Denise like he fought Lucas Bresky, he is getting chinned. I mean, like, he's getting touched up by these fucking jobbers. Denise is way more dangerous than those. I think he's slow. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, UFC, no UFC, really need, UFC really needs another lay and pray decisionator. That's exactly what they're fucking looking for. No, but I will say it because I've said this shit to Joey, too. Um. If you look a little bit in Carl Williams is like, where has he been scheduled? It's like he has been on somewhat of these bigger cards. Like uh, he opened up on the contender series, out wrestled a Penn State All-American wrestler, then debuted on the Jan Marab uh, Vegas special card. Then he fights Bretsky on the ABC Charlotte card, and then he gets a co-main event in his last fight. Like, like they, dude, Tafa's like, a, a, a jobber to me, and he almost got him up. Exactly, think, though. I think Denise is going to pick up right. Like, Tafa sucks, dude. I think Denise is going to slump this motherfucker. I don't think I don't, Denise is a bad like, fighter. Um, I think he has power and good at striking, but I think he's just green and barely learning. First couple of wins was over people where I was like one fight, you know, in their whole fucking career. But, you know, his last couple of wins was with people that actually had some wins. But, I mean, if you look at his yeah, top Austin Austin record. Lane fight, bro. Like, he was being not... out wrestled by Austin Lane, bro. Austin Lane is the worst heavyweight no, it... ever, bro. But, Billy, it's I, all dude, good. Ch dude, Chase Sherman was stuffing takedowns from Carl. Y'all act like Carl Williams is fucking Bo Nickel. Like, he's not that great of a wrestler. Like, he's a good wrestler. If he's going to win, it's probably going to be by out wrestling Denise. Like, Denise, yeah. That was a terrible look from Austin Lane, but, like, I don't think that's, like, the entire tale of the fight either. Like, Carl Williams, for as good as a wrestler as, like, he is, like, he can't finish his fucking lunch, dude. Like, couldn't finish Chase Sherman, who's been stopping and quit multiple times. Couldn't do with Bresky. Like, dude, Bresky made Mick Parkin look like fucking, like, Rosenstrike, dude. Like, Mick Parkin was a decisionator before that fight. So, like, I don't know, man. Carl Williams, to me, is, like, I, I think he's. I think he he gives me fraud vibes more than Denise. I don't know, man. Denise has only been a pro in MMA since 2022. So, in hindsight, while he was fighting kickboxing fights, Carl Williams is out here out wrestling Penn State All American so, wrestlers. So, like anyway. that's what I'm saying. Like it's a striker it's just like certain like habits at certain age ages in wrestling. You cannot break those habits that he has, bro. His habits are terrible. He gives up his back. He lays on that, the You just talk about how Carl Williams is older. He can't break the hat. Like, he's, it he's the wrestler. It he's, trying, he's trying to stand. His, dude, if he stands dude, with the knees, they he should is be on screen and talking right now instead of a knees, prelim. If he stands knees with the knees, reminds he's going to me of, that's the last thing. I, that's the last thing I'm going to say. The knees reminds me of like a dollar store rebellious this being. Like a good kickboxer. Yeah, he, no, dude, he is like more credentialed than like everybody you've mentioned in kickboxing. He's a better kickboxer than Tafa. He's a way better kickboxer than Sherman. And all those dudes put hands on Carl Williams. Well, I think Carl I, I, Williams I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just clear it up like this because the take that Billy is just giving and going back and forth is like as if he's betting them and going back and forth. So I'm gonna just end it like this. Are you betting Carl Williams? If not, then just keep it moving, Billy, because two cents is convicted on his fighter. I bet Carl Williams, but I'm not debating it like this or anything. So if you're not if you don't got a bet with Carl Williams and that convicted, let's just move on. No, I'm with you. Uh, I think you had the bet the over one and a half. Got it. All right, no, it's, it's definitely not a guarantee. It's a dog bet for sure. Like I get it. Mills got her back on track. I'll start with you on this one. Rosa versus Kansas. 
Um, man, this one going the distance, man. This is one of those ones to where you just take the women's fight, you parlay it over. It's probably <laughs> minus 330. You know, it's probably minus 330 on it. Okay, whatever. Cool. You got your one leg. Find two other things that you feel confident in and get it, man. But like I told y'all, man, I love car rows in this spot, man. Um, yeah, uh, it's certain spots on this card. I couldn't really get behind a lot of them. And this was one to where I'm just kind of like, all right, unfortunately, you know, I'm convicted 75% that she wins in this fight, no matter what happens. So I think she gets it done. I think she wins by the decision. DC, this one hit three bells? Yes, it does. I drug the last one. I'll keep it short and sweet. Carol hosts the decision. Billy? I'll keep it short. I like Carol Rosa way more than I like the price tag on Carl Williams. So, like, that gives you, like, an idea yeah. of how cards building up that's how much i like Kara rosa i'm right there with mills this weekend uh i think Kara rosa wins this fight at a very high clip billy barlow versus beer natanica i like that one i just i'm just keeping it as nikolai is short but give me the left hand from god rounds two or three by knockout uh but i will say though if he just wanted the decision like 29 28 and the fight got a little bit greasy i wouldn't be shot but i like danny barlow a lot this weekend uh He's he's just been money in the bank for me, man. It's just Dana White contender series. Um, yeah, Barlow, ITD, TC, three bells. Absolutely not. I I agree with Billy. I think uh, Vera Tinikov or whatever keeps him honest in the first round, and Barlow knocks him out in the second. Those you with the boys. Yeah, man, I'm with the boys. You know, put it out a little bit before the week started. I had a parlay with the. Uh, the two brothers, Danny Barlow and Carl Williams, you know. But I told you guys that was that's a not brand. That, that that was a no, little bit. That's not brand because you're coming at him last week because he bet against every black person on the card last week. <laughs> <laughs> Probably why he won. I mean, I mean, I mean, hey, you know, it is what it is. But um, but on this one, this was uh. But like I said, this was this was Danny Barlow minus two sixty, folks. I'm here to tell you guys. Do not parlay Danny Barlow at this price tag, folks. And I'll be honest with you guys. I'm even here to kind of tell you guys, just chill on this fight, you know, um, unless you're playing a prop to get him inside the distance. And, you know, it's nice, nice little plus money or a nice little, you know, minus 110, minus 115 or something. But, um, man, um, Rosnikov is good, man. Um, And he's going to go out there. He can mix in the wrestling. He can get Danny Barlow down to the ground. Striking is decent. It's going to go out there and look to counter. Um, did do some tape studies, seen him watch two fights, seen at least 30 minutes of them. That ain't enough, right? But it's enough to make me say, man, I'm 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 glad I got him in when I did at that minus 260. And I'm not just looking at Danny Barlow and just parlaying him. I got a question for you. Uh from a person that bet a fucking 21-year-old, not a hair on his face, Michael Morales against Nikolai that can all that like plus 110 when he was on a Dana White contender series. And it was a greasy ass fight. He lost the first round and then he won rounds two and three and pulled out a split. Like if you feel like you have a good read on the opponent, would you still feel comfortable like betting Danny Barlow? Cause like, I, I, I think it's more of like a combination of like, what's the percentage I, I on I just note. didn't know too much about his opponent. So me, I'll tell you like this. I felt way more confident against his other opponent, Urso Medic. I was all on Barlow in this one because I knew that Urso Medic's going to stand there and they both going to strike. This guy is a little bit more to where it's like, all right, man, what is he going to do? You know what I mean? He ain't going to go out there and try to put your lights out like Urso Medic. He's going to go out there and just try to win and, and, you know, stay in the UFC. Coming short on that contender series. You're like, all right, man, I just got to go out here and surprise him. One thing I don't like is everybody, man. Danny Barlow this, left-handed card this, Danny yeah, Barlow this. I agree with I agree with the hype, guys, but I'm going to be that guy when it comes to parlay time. Like, does I'm he not, fit the criteria? No, 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 no. Does he fit it? Like, does he have enough? The last time that he fought, and he, he broke his fucking left hand in the first I'm, two minutes I'm of the saying, fight. I'm just playing the seat now so you can think about it the rest of the show, Billy. Does he have? Does he have everything we need criteria wise? Moving on um, to the next one, Gregoria versus Kazuma. Mills, I'll start with you. 
I don't know man, much about think, either one of these fighters. I think Gregoria wins in this fight, man. Last time out, lost me money against Chad Allen Giller or some shit, man. Um, bad showing in that fight. Didn't look like nothing that I thought he would. He has the better team, better camp. Uh, he's a minus two ten fighting it fighter who's not really a fighter. Just goes out, tries to grab you. He wished that he had a gi on because he's like a judo guy. Um, and I think um, Gregoria's going to get it back on the track in this one, man. Get that win. And, um, you know, as long as he can, uh, you know, defend and not get uh, old boy on his back, I think he wins. God, I think he got some path to victory. Um, I heard my man Joey saying take Barlow and take Gregory by KO, TKO. Nice little plus money price tag. I don't think this one's going to 15 minutes, though, Big Show. There you go, TC. We get three bells here. No, nah, I think this is one of the easier ones to uh, to predict inside the distance. Uh, it's either going to be a Gregorio knockout or a Kazama submission. Like, it worries me a little bit that everyone's like, nobody is on Kazama. And I get it. He's probably getting knocked out. So that's probably what we're looking at, like a Gregorio knockout. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised, man, if he just, like, ducks under and gets to the back somehow. He does have, like, slick jujitsu. But, yeah, give me, uh, give me Gregorio knockout. But it ain't hitting the bells, not with these two. I feel like this is kind of your lane, Billy. What are you thinking on this fight? I, I, I get, make sure I got to make a mental note because I just want to I, I took a screenshot of the week of uh, of February and I just want to bring that up. Make sure you remind me to bring that up from February this year, what we did on the locker room podcast and we'll revisit that. But um, for this fight here, Gagori, um, I just was a little bit he just gives me a little bit of like fluky vibes bro like maybe his de usc debut was usc jitters but dropping a decision to chad ellinger is just not a good look man because i was an action-packed fighter 11 out of his 14 pro fights have gone under two and a half um being knocked out in back-to-back -back losses i kind of question his decision making um he's definitely not a ufc level type of talent uh there's just no process to his game so i kind of just like violence in this fight more than betting gagori money on all right, moving on. Santos versus Chandler. Billy, while you're still up. Uh, yeah, like Chandler by decision. Um, I, 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 we can't talk anymore about the fucking town of Santos and Jesse Chandler today. Right on, TC. I'm going to say Chelsea Chandler gets the GMP TKO. It's not super confident. I goddamn am I I could not pass more on this fight, but yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Chandler gets the GMP TKO and gets Santos 2.0 up out of there. Mills, three bells. Um, it's going three bells, man. I like Yana Santos in this fight, man. I got a bet on her, man. Played her at that minus 140 price tag. Look, listen, hear me out. I know I get it. She's 0-3 in her last couple of fights. Let, let, let me ask you something. Big show. Do you think Irene Aldana would be Chelsea Chandler, yes or no? Yeah. Do you think Holly Holm would beat Chelsea Chandler? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. What about what about Carol Rose Hosa? Do you think she would beat Chelsea Chandler? Uh, that's a, that's a, the tightest one out of all of them. But yeah, I still I still think she beats her. But I've been got sitting it. up at Chelsea Chandler to fucking you know she's only got what eight bites. Got it. Chelsea years. Chandler, I think she beat. Julia Storolenko, right? Yeah. Got it. Yana Santos beat Julia Storolenko. Um, Big Show, do you think Chelsea Chandler could beat Caitlin Vieira, who's fighting uh, Kayla Harrison? Coming I out? hate when people do this shit, though, in MMA. Now watch this. They watch start this. doing watch. the comparing the resume shit. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should ask Billy really on that. Ask Billy really on that one. Every got it, got it, got it. Week, <laughs> All bro. that to say Everybody is, does All this, this say every is. week. This is, do, do, do you think you would be We're going to talk more about Santos Chandler, boys. That bitch would fucking lose. Yes, Mills, that's not the fucking question. The question is, is she going to stop takedowns? on Sunday? No, I don't think so. So she's probably going to lose. That's the question? I didn't even know nobody was talking to you, Billy, so I didn't even hear a question. I'm just saying, saying, what bro, I hate when people about? do the MMA math shit, bro. That's when was that question even opposed? That has Who nothing asked you to do with the fight, though, bro. They, know, bro. they asked you already. Who fought who has nothing to do with the fight? They asked you already. <laughs> what the hell? This dude. So look, all that to say this, right? MMA math don't mean shit. It don't mean shit, right? It don't mean nothing. All because you lost to this fighter and that fighter beat this one. If you just would have waited a minute and see where I was going with it, you'll still see my take to say this. 
It made math don't add up. The other thing that don't add up is Chelsea Chandler acting like she's the dog of the week for you guys and everybody else in this community. Give me Giannis Santos to get back on track and get that win track going in here, man. I think she's going to be able to get the path to victory. I don't care about the MMA math or anything like that. I just know what I've seen, and I've seen a grown woman run in the cage away from another one, okay? And there's no way I'm getting to the window with that. <laughs> Y'all can have fun with that. I went to I'll the window with that Sancho. last time. I, I, plus 125 cash. Good money on it, man. Let me cool. uh, let, let, I'll, I'll, let me say I, this. I'm I, glad uh, you feel good. I, uh, there's no question who has a better resume. It's clearly Giannis Santos. Like, that's, that's not a debate. But I'll say this. Dude, Giannis Santos, or whatever uh, she was, Kunitskaya, she went to decision with Julie Stolyarenko, and Chelsea Chandler stomped a fucking mud hole in that bitch, like, bad. So, like, I think this is an honest fight. I can't wait to see who wins this one. So, everybody tune in, man. Smash the like button, everybody that's listening. Her Y'all and her shit. husband haven't won a fight in three years. What are we doing? Why is she a favorite in any fight? Fight! Yeah, I mean, that's, on, I man. mean, it, you should have open. You should have just opened with that shit. I don't know what the fuck you're holding that in the back pocket for for another podcast or something. Yeah, damn, you should open that. Up. Her husband's on a four fight losing streak. She's on a four. She's on a three fight losing streak. They got two kids, bro. They worried about the kids, bro. The fighting shit for them, bro, is so chalked up, bro. Like it's ridiculous, bro. Giannis the cast is the catalyst. The, the cat, the cast gets the juices flowing, Bobo. All right, boy, I mean, trying to move on. Out. Side of flags this week. That's why. So when you planted your flag, I was like, damn, I already got money on Carl Williams. When Joey called in, I was about to hang up the phone on him. You know what I mean? Because it's like, <laughs> bro, like I was about to say wrong number. You're like, bro, I think wrong, wrong number. Wrong, said wrong number. Nah, Joey, you got the wrong number. See you next week. <laughs> like, right, right. Like, but you I let him get me this week, huh? Is that is right. that to get me and everything I'm about? That's all right. I still love you. I still got uh, moving crazy. on to the podcast. I'm night, glad boys. we added that in there, bro. We added the Giannis Athos Chelsea Chandler one by like four sitting, and that's been the fight we probably talked about the most. <laughs> I know. We, get, we get three bells in this mills, man. I do not think we get three bells in this one, man. Um, yeah. Um, and I think the dog's alive. Don't think the price is right. Like Cheppy Marisol, you know, um, made a lot of money with Damian Jackson earlier on. He was on a three fight consistent win streak for me, maybe even four, I think. And they were all with dogs. Then I lost. Then I lost. Then I, <laughs> then I lost. <laughs> then, then I stopped. You know what I mean? So I think it was like that. Like, you know, I lost once. I stopped. Then I got back and I lost again. So I was like, all right, you know, it's what it is. But in this one, though, man, I think Damian yeah. Jackson. Live, man, but the thing is, this his chin just ain't there. And Cheppy Marisol, one punch, one crack from anywhere, left hand to God. I mean, shit, he got the right hand from Quran or something, man, because he putting people <laughs> up in the sky. <laughs> that's tough. That's that's, that's pretty tough. <laughs> right. so Bro, I can't up believe the fucking right the left. On that. No, did he? Uh, I, I, I been, like Cheppy Marisol, man. But I, I gotta go with the pick, man. I like Chepe Marisol to win, man. But um, like I said, it's just it's hard to bet him at that minus two ten. Um, but I think he wins. Inside the distance, real quick. Yeah, inside the distance. TC three bells. <laughs> Probably not. I'll tell you what, dude. I'm picking Chepe Marisol to win this fight. Okay. I've tried to fade this motherfucker in every <laughs> UFC fight. I'm 0 and 3. All right. I'm oh. picking him to win. If he you loses call this him a jobber, fight, you don't call him a jobber no more. I remember if, you learned. If, you, if, right. I have I, and I have not right. so far. I remember. He, 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 beat it, he beat it out of me, so to speak. Pause. Figuratively speaking. Um, so <laughs> if he loses this fight, when I and I pick him to win, I am boycotting picking Chepe Marisco. I don't give a fuck. You can call me a, a, a fraud or what. I don't give a shit. I'll leave it blank on Tapology. I won't pick it in the fucking contest. I, I don't. I will not pick this motherfucker's fight. I can't he get said right. I won't even I'm pick it in the free contest. Things, I'm gonna lose. I can. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna pick it. And it's gonna lose anyway. So I'm just not gonna do it. So Chepe, please win this fight. You're not a jobber. You're a good fighter. You can beat Damon Jackson. Uh, just you're you're younger. You're you're more powerful. So knock this motherfucker out, please, for the love of God. Ooh, Nage, you see, I think it's inside the distance. Yes, I'm sorry, Chepe Mariscal on knockout. Sorry, Billy. 
Man, I loved how Bill started out with the David Jackson breakdown of like, I was betting on it when he first came over to the UFC, was making money. I'm like, yo, I fuck with David Jackson. Then I lost. Then I lost. Then I lost. And I'm like, yo, I'm about to chill the fuck out on betting David Jackson. And I was only lost twice. And, then I, and I did it. And I chilled out on the Alex Hernandez one and I left money on the table. Cal, Cal did the interview. He's telling me, I'm telling you, David Jackson, this, that, and the third. I'm like, bro. I'm about to chill, bro. And then on the other hand, on Chepe Marichal, I keep on paying against him and losing money and asking myself, what the fuck am I doing wrong? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I've literally bet against him yeah. in every one of his UFC fights and looked at myself at the end of the week like, doesn't need two cents just say he's a jobber. I didn't agree with him. Now I'm out here looking like a dickhead, but I lost my money. And I've done that three times in a row versus a fighter where I just lost money betting him. For I couldn't tell you the last time I won money on David Jackson. It's just what, 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 why is it that you think he's like not good though, or something? Because like that's the I don't thing. No, like, bro. I don't know. My 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 whole entire opinion of him changed in the Morgan Chirier fight. I'm never disrespecting more uh fucking Chepe Marischal again. He's been lying as an underdog three straight fights and the bookies have said wrong 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 they did morgan dirty in that fight every peak fight the line flip his last fight against morgan Tarrier, the line flip they not priced really. him as an underdog you it him. went down uh, every time they priced chef marshall as a dog they've gotten hit and they said fuck that he's a 260 so what you lose the, the funny, the funny oh, thing is, Billy is over here like talking about Chepe, and both of you guys are like trying to get in, and you guys are both on Chepe. So it's kind of weird, like, like you're trying to Chepe slow Billy's roll down a little bit or something. Like, I'm, I'm just fucking, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm super stoned. I'm just talking shit at this point. Bring it, we're bringing up. I, I thought it was a good entertaining. Me. No, it was, it was good. Like it, it was good. Like, like I'm saying, like they were just trying to find a reason to fucking say you were wrong about something. I just feel no, like, no, no. It's just, it's no, just, I'm just trying to I figure it out. Brought it back, brought it back up. Because really, like, uh, it's, I, for people window. for people that are getting sides wrong, I feel like you're getting sides wrong. Just change the bet entirely. Just go with strict time bets. No, and just play, bro, and just play it that way instead of trying to pick the side. This is the Michael Chiesa fight from last week of like, this is the price tag that everybody's saying. Dog or pass, dog or pass. The Sharks are saying, Chepe too wide. You know what, bro? He's just going to win the fight. Fucking party. Yeah, there ain't going to be a lot of dog or pass on this card, especially if we if we lose another fight. If we stay at 11, it's going to be pretty It's going to be pretty tight. But All moving right, on to the last fight, boys. Solid. We got two cent versus Big Show for the main event. All right. <laughs> Usain on the left, Big Show on the right. Tabora's the my, the plus. Go ahead. You gonna do me like yeah. that? Come on now. God damn. I, I did. I did ask two two cents at two uh, two sixty five two cent. Who would you rather fight in this one? <laughs> Dude, I, don't I know, know who I would probably rather fight. I'd probably rather fight Tabora. Yeah. So this main event yeah. right yeah. here. I'd rather fight Speedback. His face looks punchable. This main event's kind of got two fighters that resemble the same, man. Wrestlers that usually go for takedowns and stuff like that. The striking's not going to be there. But both these guys need a win at this case, man. Spivak, yeah. he was on that pace, you know. And then I forgot who he fought, but he just got folded and didn't look good. Since then, he never really bounced back. Was it Cyril Gunn? I don't remember. Um, But I remember I was putting in money with him and stuff for a polar bear. Um, Marcin's high bar was my boy, too. It was a minute, man. I was betting on him when he was fat, chubby, though, hey, making money. Everybody was like, oh, hell no, Marcin high bar. It was when he lost three straight fights, and then he started just winning, winning, winning. winning. And everybody was like, oh, he's fighting this guy. That's going to knock him out. That's going to knock him. Nope, nope, nope. So I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm in the spot, but I'm in a spot to where – Spivak opened minus 115. Now he's up to that minus 150. I was hoping that I just hopped in then, but I did because I thought it was going to stay at that price all week. Um, I don't think this fight goes the distance. I think Spivak does get the takedowns. Uh, when it's all said and done, he's at that minus 150. There's not too many other fights on here that's like lower than a minus 180 that I could just go to the window with and feel confident with. At least with Spivak, I know what he's going to do. Um, and Tybor, if he gets taken down, 
I don't think he's going to be able to keep getting up and keep getting up and keep getting up. So now at that minus 155, I did play him at that minus 135 before he got to there. I think Spavak wins. Polar Bear season is here. Um, not too convicted, though, to tell you guys Tybor is not live, this and that, because y'all heard my other spill. And if anybody could do it here, it's him, man. I mean, he didn't fought the who's who's, too. He did uh, it once. But, huh? He did it once, too. He, he, did, it, uh, he, you know, he, he did it once already, too. <laughs> they fought, but when they fought, how did he win? What was Spivak it? Went for takedowns. Spivak went for takedowns, but Spivak's takedowns aren't like the American wrestling single leg, double leg. It's more of like judo chosses and trips. And Tybora kind of read it. You ain't gonna get that big fella down under the arms, bro. Yeah. That's you what? know, you gotta you gotta get to the knee and get behind I him. Think, and... I think the reason why the line moves so much is because Spivak might be just straight up 30 pounds heavier than him this weekend. We'll yeah. see on weigh in day, but as of right now, based off of like their careers and like where they weighed in, Spivak probably gonna be 30 pounds heavier. Yeah, so I'd be like, curious to go back and see what they weighed in the last fight and see what they come in on this one. See if That's any game plan, see if any game plan Spivak. changed like that. Like maybe Spivak's like, fuck it, maybe I can't throw him. Maybe I'll just get a lot more weight on the lower half. No diddy. You know what I'm saying? Like I think Spivak's, I think Spivak's striking has improved too. That's just me. Like a little like not crazy, but like I mean, he's only lost to Gon and Aspinall too since Tabora. So, like, he's that fought good people not. and end them are the losses. Okay. And check this out. He didn't get chinned by Augusto Sakai. He fucking crushed that motherfucker, like, bad. So, like, okay. I don't okay. know, man, yet. <laughs> Anybody else betting on this fight or no? I like the under, bro. Fuck the bullshit. This is one of those ones, Big Show. You asked me in the last one, get off the sides, pick a total. No, this is the total. These somebody's gonna somebody's gonna die, bro. Like not hey, look saying at, like looking at leave, looking at but... topology. You know what a weird finish is for uh, Spivak? How the hell did you get an arm under fucking Derek Lewis's neck? Because his arm is just bigger. It would. I, I don't know. I just. That's crazy. It's, like, it's how do you get an arm triangle against fucking? Like, that's yeah, like that's like man. that's like sticking three ham hocks together and trying to like squeeze it. Like that's that's crazy, dude. Uh, I don't know. Hey, yo. I'm gonna. You guys want to go for? Bet the for my, you guys want to go for? Go ahead, go ahead too. Just just real for my for the record, I think that this fight actually finishes inside the distance. I feel like one of them really likes her two under. I, I feel like Spivak. <clears throat> I feel like Spivak. Uh, Ty Burrow does not have a good chin, man. He does not like getting hit. And uh, if Spivak starts to put it on him, man, I think he'll get the TKO. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, I could see like Spivak got a little quit in him too now, Bobo. So, right, right, right. I Later Ty, round. I, I, I Later can see Ty Burrow right. maybe doing the same shit. So, like, maybe yeah, I see one of them gets the other up out of there, but. Uh, I, look, yeah, I don't know, I, Mills. I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to ride with you on Spivak, but I'm. I'm still. I'm still tossing it up in my in my dumbass head. I think Tybora has the better cardio, though. But cardio doesn't. If there is ever a weight class where cardio does not matter, it's the heavyweight division. So five round like, heavyweight too. High, five round yeah, heavyweight. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of. It's. It's either going to roll around for fucking four rounds and strike for the first one, or somebody's going to get knocked out in the second. I think Spivak's going to go for the finish. He's either going to. Finish and if he doesn't get the finish, he's probably gonna gas out. I think Tybor has the way better cardio. That's how he won the first fight. What the fuck are you doing, Mills? Like, All what right, makes you think that Spivak wins a five round fight I'm that, typing. that goes to a decision if he lost the three round decision? Like, if you like Spivak, just take it by knockout. No, word. I'm not gonna just take him by knockout. I already bet him. So wordily word. There you go again. I'm just saying, if you like you Spivak, Spivak, if you, if you look, look, big show. If you like, money, just you take him by knockout. He subs him easy. No, just I, take I, him by I, knockout. I, I, I did just say he subbed, subbed Derek Lewis with an arm triangle. Like, like I'm just saying, like, inside the distance, by knockout. like his last be, win was a sub. Be, exact. Yo, yo, inside yo, the distance for Sergey Spivak should be plus money rather than paying the minus money on the fucking money line. There, there inside the distance, that's not what All you right, said. Boy, it's time to get to the far left. A word from our sponsor, real quick, though.
Welcome back to the Locker Room Talk podcast. Now's the time where we're going to get into it and start going over some of the parlays for this card. Um, anybody want to take a first stab at it? I'm going to – it's going to be a real tight parlay, boys. I think there's like four or five candidates, and we're all around the same area. So, Well, I'll start by saying I think the fights that we agreed on on the card as a panel was Yusuf Salau – the Denise Williams one, we were completely split. Uh, Kara Rosa Kianza, we were completely split. We all like Danny Barlow. We all like Charlie Lampos, I believe. And we were split on Santos Chandler. We all ironically ended up picking Chepe Marichal, but nobody likes Chepe Marichal. <laughs> and the main event was undecided that was the cliff notes from the podcast right well do do we put chepe on the the blacklist prime project and just put him in there i i i kind of like him as the as one of the core but he's definitely on that like you guys already have it you, you already don't like him so yeah. it would be an easy you know i don't nominate we've, we've too many been I let you guys just have the no, core so I, I, wait, wait, wait this is what i wanted to bring up uh this is actually what i really wanted to bring up Let's go back to the last time Danny Barlow fought on a fucking pay-per-view of Alexander Volkanovsky versus Taporia, a fight main card that featured Jeff Neal and Ian Gary at minus 300. Marab Davashili was minus 250. And we, out of all the fights on the card that we picked, we picked a young Danny Barlow making his USC debut where he broke his hand and he cashed the parlay core for us. And it was one of our best weeks in the locker room this year. That was in February. I think we put Danny Barlow right back in the court, boys. I mean, he literally broke his hand. Everything that could have went wrong would have went wrong, and he still won the fight. Now he's fighting a dude on short notice. I think the candidacy is for Danny Barlow. Mills literally had a plant the flag. This is where the original who's O will go segment came from. Bro, we've been a fan of Danny Barlow on the Locker Room Podcast for years, bro. Back to the Dana White Contender Series when he fought Raheem Forrest, we bet him. Said left hand from God, knocked him out inside the distance. Everybody's on the train now, but we were the originators of the train, bro. I think he goes back in the fucking base, bro. Okay, let me... Does he, does he got enough criteria for you, Billy? If Bro, Don't we picked me. him over Ian Gary at minus 300. I know, but that's when we were Ian young and Gary naive and not on a fucking team. We parlayed him. Bro, that's I, the I get it. I'm just saying. I'm just pushing back a little bit. We got it. We got it. We got it. Bar, we, we got it. Um, let's, let's, let's move forward and see. Okay, now 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 where do we go with that? I, I'm not against Barlow, but I'll just – I think the dude's going to keep him honest. I don't think this dude is some, like, fucking scrub. I don't think he's necessarily just going to smash him early. He could. But I'm not against putting Barlow in there. So that's my little bit of pushback, my little whatever, vetting. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with Barlow. I'm all right with that. I'm cool with Zalal, too. So, I, you know, I'm not against either one of those. Um, but, yeah, those are those are probably the two, like, big numbers that I – I mean, that's going to be a common one, but I'm, I'm okay with that. But, uh, yeah, I guess – and I'll be – I'll push back on Chepe a little bit, but I'm not like I get like, dude. If he could just be saved for like the spinoff legs, you know what I'm saying? Like he's a third leg, maybe not at that base. I mean, he's been an underdog three times. Well, we if he's a really... third leg, who's the who's the second leg, Billy? You you got Barlow and who? I I, I with two cents just I feel like it's like the Barlow the point of the, the point of the podcast. I feel like sometimes is like they get the core through. So then we can do the other legs to get the plus monies and then we cash all the parlays. And then that's how, you know, the podcast has been throughout the years and stuff like I, that. So I agree. Um, I think it's just about getting the core right, bro. And I think Yusuf Zalal and Danny Barlow both win their fights, bro. Any pushback from the you, Mel? Zalau line, The Yusuf Zalal line at minus 400 is to scare. We all had Billy Corintillo last time against them. We all look like dickheads. Like, nah, let's just keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's add in our legs. All right. First, 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 though, that is a uh, minus 175 on my bookie. Is that what you guys want to rock? I'm rocking with it. All right. I'll write it down. Not opposed. 
juice my. juice box special this week? <laughs> uh, I guess. Better to be right than wrong. One of those type of ones. Hopefully we're right. No, it's just, that, it's, them, are the, them are the ones we got to get right, though. We got to get them two right, and then we can get whatever just kind of grease you want on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I, Anybody want to go? I'll go first. I got Carl Williams for my leg. Ooh, the plus one thirty three. I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> it's stuff really that I already have bet. That's why it's just, it, these are these are stuff that I already have bet. So it's just that. So I'm like, if I'm in, I'm in. Fuck it. Um, plus one thirty one mills. Let's rock. Um, I'll go. Me, Carol Rosa. Ooh, I like it. Oh, I'm, Carosa, a, I'm a playing. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I'm playing these. I can get these. I like DC, these. I'll let you go first, bud. I like where we're going. Fuck. You know what? I know you're not really supposed to do this. I know you say don't do this. I would never condone doing this in the I court. like it already. I, I, don't don't think, it. I already I don't like it. it. I don't think I'm it would fly anyway. But you know what? I'm with you. Brother, give me polar bear, brother. Sergei yes, Spiro. sir. I knew it. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Winning this Plus season. 160. Polar bear. Yes, brother. Polar bear. Hey, big show. Bring it home. We can hit the court we, and then we can catch his legs. I, I love everything. Oh, don't lie. now look. Don't make me play something that's gonna make me regret. Cause like, don't don't say the name. I want and I got so good. It, I want something so good. And it's going so against good. one of the one of the guys. Okay, so don't do that. So good. It's a five leg parlay. Where like, I'm just parlaying all the fucking legs. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go to boy. I'm gonna go to <laughs> Bro, why are you gonna yeah, do that? I like man? it. I like it. I like I almost it. Why are you that. gonna post this, man? I like what? It. You, you, you can get anybody else, bro. Like you. Anybody you else? Wanna... There's eleven people on the card. There's four right. no name fights, <laughs> and the the, the, all the the only other two shots I would take are dogs. So why would all I take a dog? No, no, it's what all good. The, it's all good. Shots that you would take just just. I, in the I, I could play that one. I, I, I could play I mean, it though. Chelsea, I can Chandler still play. Is one of them. I like and then Janta. I mean, Janta no, would probably good. be the other one. Because, look, I could so. play that, and then when it comes down to it, if I got an individual bet on Jackson, then it's just individual. You know what I mean? But like I said, just that, that's just how it was last week with the, uh, Corey Sanhagen and Umar. I could play all those, though, so it's cool. I, I, I rock I with it. I, rather, I'm playing them all. I, I'm rocking I, I'm with cool. it. I, I, we good. I'm Dude, if I'm gonna spread. lose, if I'm gonna lose that fucking plant your flag, at least one of the parlays for the show is cashing. So like that's whatever. That's Gucci. Like that's cool with me. Like I, I mean, it's gonna suck yeah. losing the bet. But, like you know, whatever. But you got a dog bet. Exactly. It's like you got a dog bet on one, but dog you got a parlay, a parlay that's still gonna be plus money if you play it. You know what I mean? So that's how I looked right. at it last week with that Umar. So I was like, hey, I'm not mad. Even though I'm betting Corey Sanhagen, that's a big plus money price tag to where, hey, if, if right. that don't real, win, real, I got that part. Real, real, real quick, a uh, little uh, uh, housekeeping here. We do got a guy that's came on the show almost every show wanting to put a parlay in. Do we throw him on the card with us all? And do we do it six legs? Because Joey's saying Chandler plus 253. Do you guys want to throw it on the – I'll leave it up to you guys. Wait, what but now? saying that from behind, he's saying the core plus Chandler plus two fifty three. If you guys want to play it off, if it doesn't make the card, Chandler would probably be a straight bet for me. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about parlaying. Parlaying, I'm not that because I'm not. I'm, I'm and like I said, I'm already on Santos bet that. So it's like to add just more to the table. He got his flag. I'll, I, I might retweet your flag, bro. <laughs> he said I might retweet your play. I might. All right, boys. Uh, well, best of luck. Hopefully you cash it. This will be the, what, six week in a row we six catch the core if we do. Let's go. Six so that's week, a, baby. That's a fucking good run. I remember in the beginning we were trying to get two in a row for a long time. Right. And we, we we started doing it. Now we're we're being pretty consistent. 
I can't believe, like, I, I'll just say this again, bro. On a car with Alexander Volkanovsky, Taporia, Ian Gary was minus 300, Marab Davishili 250, and Rinya Nakamura minus 1200. And we had Danny Barlow in the base, bro. We are like the Danny Barlow, like, homie originators. Uh, well, hope, yeah. hopefully it all comes true, Billy. What do you got yeah, going no, on? I was at the, uh, that was when I was at Curtis's bar. When they when he knocked him out and we had him to win inside the distance too, so it was a it was a nice little clip too and everything like that. But yeah, man, um, let, let's keep it going over there, man. If you guys want to see what's going on, check out our interview with uh, Malcolm Wellmarker. It's gonna be dropping Wednesday, um, the day after the podcast drops. Uh, he's gonna be fighting on the Dana White Contender Series August twenty seventh. Uh, seven and zero fighter fighting out of Augusta, Georgia. So check that out on the station out here. You know, got the series dropping for you guys. Uh, and then also too, got an interview coming out with Joey the Hitman Hart. He's gonna be fighting on the Dana White Contender Series too. I'm um, going to be recording that interview this week, Wednesday, going to premiere it probably the next following week, trying to get a Dana White Contender Series interview for you guys to drop one every single week. So you guys stay in tune with everything that's coming out in the locker room. Tell them where to find you. You might as well finish it all out. You already know. MMA Locker Room on Instagram, Twitter, and X. Uh, that's that's so where you can find me at interviewing your favorite fighters and stuff, putting out the media clips. Check me next month in San Diego. Going to be covering the uh, Bellator event out there. Umar Namagamadoff fighting on the card. Uh, Rufian Stas fighting on the card. Lorenz Larkin. The list goes on. Uh, appreciate everybody out there. If you guys are watching this, hit up the likes. Hit up the subscribe. Hit up the chat. Shout out to Slaughter. We just over here getting these dollars. TC, what do you got going on the rest of the week? And where can they find you? First of all, Shout out to you boys. Shout out to everybody watching right now. Everybody watching the premiere. Y'all, this shit, smash the like button. Shout out to the whole fucking pub. Like Mill said, shout out to Jeff Slaughter for letting us do this. Um, yeah, man, you can find me at my channel right there. Just my two cents. Uh, I will be pre-gaming this Saturday per usual. I think I'm going to start the stream around 2 o'clock. So if anybody wants to come through, shoot the shit a little bit, um, I will be there. And then you know where to find me Saturday night, man, at the pub. So, uh, yeah, man, everybody get subscribed consider joining becoming a member if you're not already definitely smash the like button again shout out to everybody watching the premiere and uh shout out to you boys man let's uh, let's make it another good one let's uh, smash the parlays and uh yeah best of luck everyone real quick before we get to billy to send us out of here go check out the pub sports radio contest it's free to sign up every week it's a hundred dollars to win all you got to do is pick your pick your bites basically the same thing you do on tapology we give out a hundred dollars each week to the highest score and it tracks your shit. If you want your shit tracked on the pub, on the Pub Sports Radio website, all you got to do is at Pub Sports Radio with your action. But Billy, what do you got going on the rest of the week? And send us out of here, brother. Oh uh, yeah, man. If you guys are watching this, make sure you guys hit up the happy birthdays for Big Show in the comments right now on YouTube. Everybody, man, drop a happy birthday. If you're watching it right now, say hi right after this birthday. Big Go. Show. Go ahead, WNBA back next week. Make sure you guys stay tuned here at Pub Sports Radio and Dana White Contender Series. Hashtag Tuesday nights are back, baby. See you till next week. Dana White Contender Series next time that we'll see you guys before the next Locker Room Podcast. Till next time here. We be pubbing.